I love rapid strikes and I also love using rapid strike switch plates to get them set up because it makes things easy. The only problem is they really haven't changed too much over the years and you can still end up with a big rat's nest of wires inside of your blaster and each one has their own individual pros and cons which I'll go over in just a bit. And the reason I'm going to go over that before we get into the main part of this uh, video is because I think it really helps sell this thing right here on how awesome it really is. But we'll get to that in just a bit. This is to keep you interested in the video. But let's start with the left and work our way to the right, starting with the BSUK switch plate. This is the BSUK plate. Not only was it the kind of the first one on the market, but it's also one of the cheapest that you can get. But the problem with it is that it always needs tweaking to fit and work properly and it isn't too impressive. I've always had to drill out these holes in order to fit and I also have to carve out this area right here in order for it to fit the rapid strike properly. It's not really impressive, but when you get it set up, it works just fine and it's what I've been using for all of my rapid strike builds so far. This is, well, obviously the Blaster Tech switch plate and it is a really nice option. It's very well laid out. Everything is really thought through and it's well printed. And compared to the BSUK one, it's just a nicer switch plate overall. Uh, there's a little bit of tweaks going on here that really make it stand out, especially this piece right here. And if you compare that to the BSUK one, this allows the pusher arm a little bit more area and contact with the switch compared to this, which I always have to angle at a weird, kind of way in order for it to catch on the pusher arm. But overall, this one is really nice. The problem with this plate is it is very expensive to get in the US. Since Blaster Tech is in Australia and doesn't have any distributors outside the country, the price to get uh, either the options for this in the simplest form, uh, both in shipping and the, I guess, with the wiring and switches and whatnot, it is 35 to 42 plus dollars to get this from Australia to Atlanta. And that's just one of these. Price will go up the more you put into your cards. It's really expensive and I really wish Dean would get a distributor in the US because this plate is so nice. It's really good, I love this product, but it's really darn pricey. So uh, hint, hint, Dean, get a distributor for the US please. The last plate we have here is a collaboration between myself and Containment Crew because I was tired of not being able to get Blaster Tech plates into the US without paying an arm and a leg and I was tired of using the BSUK plates because they're just too simple and not really that good. Even though they're cheap, it could be better. Now, not to toot my own horn, but there's a lot of stuff going on with the switch plate that I really, really like over the other ones. First of all, all the switches are screwed down for easy replacement. They just screw into the plate. Um, I guess you could do that with the other ones in these thicker little platform areas, but that would require a pilot hole and getting the screws in. This is already done for you. Another thing I really like is the stock rapid strike like uh, pusher arm mechanism right here. So unlike the BSUK one, which I always have a problem with getting the arm into the right angle where you have to kind of bend the switch around so the pusher arm has an easy time getting up onto this curve. This one has a lovely 90 degree bend right there and it's just like the stock rapid strike so it works really really well and i've used the prototype of this at end war so i know it works very very well plus you get a nice little bobo rev trigger and i know not everyone wants to use uh, kind of a proprietary trigger but it is very comfortable and i really like it and the main trigger right here has a little bit of a hard time getting up to the uh the main switch so you don't have to worry about accidentally pushing it down or something it takes a little bit of pressure which i really enjoy but i really dig this one i think it's great containment crew did a great job kind of getting my wants and needs if you'd like to see this on the market uh tell containment crew you want this for sale but this video is not about my my uh switch plate it's about this one from adrian kelly and it is super duper cool the adrian kelly switch plate isn't 3d printed it is a PCB, a printed circuit board, and there is so much cool stuff jam-packed into this little thing, I had to make a video on it because it is really, really cool, and it will make wiring super duper easy. So let's go over everything happening with this thing. So like I said, it is a printed circuit board, and if you really don't like having to shove a bunch of wires into your rapid strike handle, all the wiring is done for you except for the pusher motor leads, the flywheel leads, and the battery leads. Everything else, 
is inside of the printed circuit board, which is really cool. It keeps things nice and clean and very well organized. Another thing I like about this, which is the same thing I had done to my switch plate, is all the switches are mounted to the board directly with uh, M3 screws or 440 screws will work as well. So you get your screws and you get your switches and the screws just kind of plop into place here and you push them in and on the back, you put a nut right there and that is how you mount your switches in, which is very cool. The Rev Trigger one has its own 3D printed piece that goes on top of it and a little 3D printed trigger to fit in place and it just mounts as well, which is really, really nice. And I love that about my board and this one, very easy to swap your switches out, which I think is a huge thing because you know, if you're not using a MOSFET or you don't know how to set up a MOSFET, this makes it easy to switch out your, your switches in case either a short circuit happens or if you know, just your motor setup is too much and you pop a switch. Makes things very easily replaceable, which I like. And the biggest thing about this board, which takes it beyond everything else, are the options for it. When I mean options, I'm talking about this right here. At the bottom here, you have live center, dead center, and region dead center, which are basically the ways of how you want your switch plate wired up. And I'll get to what those are in just a second. And you also have a pusher rev lock and a no pusher lock, which just means, do you want your pusher arm to not activate unless the flywheels are going, or do you not care if the wheels are going, you just want that arm to go off whenever. Very cool and it's super duper easy to set this up and I'll explain to you how to do that right now. So what are the different firing options? I asked Adrian Kelly to give me kind of the, the explain like I'm five version of these. So live center is when the pusher is not all the way back in the back position um, and you let go of the main trigger, what controls the pusher arm, the motor will continue to run completing the shot and ensuring the pusher arm reaches the back once the pusher gets back to its normal position, uh, it will break the motor to keep that pusher arm from moving. Dead center is when the pusher is not all the way back and you let go of the main trigger, the motor will coast it, meaning instead of the motor being powered, the motor turns off, but it still you know, cycles around. If the arm reaches the back, it will break the arm, but it doesn't always reach the back, which leads to a longer lag time for the next shot if the arm doesn't go back into its normal position. Region dead center is a dead center circuit most of the time, except when you release the rev trigger, it uses the powers from the flywheels to make sure the pusher is retracted. So it's a live center circuit while you release the trigger. So it tries to get the pusher arm back. So it's like a combination of live and dead center, but in one little wiring package. Now, one thing I'd like to put out there is that Foam Data Services told me he really doesn't see much of a difference between live and dead center, though he likes dead because it allows for a MOSFET in the circuit. So if you wanna add a MOSFET to this board, you just have to go with dead center and I'll explain how to add a MOSFET into it in just a bit. Now, how do you switch between the different circuits? That is also very easy. So say you wanna go with a live circuit, you leave the circuit as it is right now. You can see that little silvery connection right there between dead center and live. You just don't touch anything, now you have a live circuit. Doing dead center is very easy. All you have to do is scrape off this little connection right here. An object like a razor blade or just something sharp will ensure that you get it done. And all you have to do is take this and scrape it. And that is all you have to do to get it down to dead center. You just scrape away that little trace until you see the PCB and you could fill that up with something like liquid E-tape to make sure that the gap is completely separated. And that's how you do dead center. For region dead center, you just scrape away the area between dead center and live center to get rid of that small little trace. And you can either put a piece of metal between dead center and region dead center, or just put a big solder blob between the two, but you just connect dead center to region dead center. And that's how you choose the region dead center option. For the pusher rev locks, it's pretty much the same thing. If you want the pusher rev lock, you just leave it as is. If for some reason you don't want the pusher rev lock, and I'm not really sure why you wouldn't want it, you just slice the connection here and solder the middle tab to the bottom tab, and that's all you have to do. Pretty darn simple. And that's all you have to do to select your options. Now soldering this thing up is really darn easy. Next to all the little arms on your switches are these tiny little holes right here. All you have to do is take your wire and stick it through the little hole and you just solder the connection like so. And that's how you connect the tabs to the boards. Now, one thing Adrian Kelly wanted me to explicitly note is that this hole right here at the bottom for your uh, comm tab for the pusher switch, 
You want that to go on the inside of the tab for this so it doesn't mess with the main trigger of the rapid strike. But getting this thing is set up is pretty darn easy. If you've ever soldered circuit boards, it's basically that. You don't have a bunch of wires going everywhere. You don't need diagrams to figure out what goes where. Everything is already kind of done for you. So let me solder this thing up and then we can put it into a rapid strike and see if it works as well as it is set up. And here it is all soldered up. Um, I would highly recommend getting a set of helping hands to get this together as this little piece does heat up as you are soldering it. And I guess the biggest piece of advice or at least the easiest method that I found for getting this together is to kind of tack solder the little piece of metal onto the tab, flip this over, do uh, cut to size, do that part entirely before you entirely solder the little piece of metal onto the tab. Uh, that way you're not, you know, pulling it through the hole and moving it around very much and you get a nice solder joint on there. But yeah, the helping hands will help you a lot. One of the questions that I know is going to get asked, and I've already asked Adrian about this, is can you add a MOSFET into the circuitry or add it to the switch plate? And the answer is yes, and it's very, very simple and easier than any of the other sort of wiring diagrams that I've come across, at least in my opinion. Adrian says all you have to do is connect the gate of the MOSFET to the positive terminal of the flywheels, which is the bottom pad right here, while the switch plate is in the dead center mode. Drain goes to the flywheel negative, which is the top right here, and the source of the MOSFET goes to the battery negative, which is this pad right here. And while you can connect them to the pads itself, I think the, I mean, I think that you should do the MOSFET stuff outside of the circuit board so that you can more easily attach it to the wires, but that's just me. You can also connect them to the board itself, but it's that simple. And uh, now that we have this all, put together, I'm going to try out the uh, the live center option with the pusher rev lock. And I have myself a volunteer rapid strike. Don't really know what motor is in the pusher because I haven't opened that up in a while. But I believe we have some fangs and OFP cage. So I'm going to simply solder this up so that everything is in place. We're going to see if it actually works. So let me get all this put together. I have installed the switch plate and you will have to cut down the main trigger in order for it to fit and work with the switch plate. And one thing I also recommend is to install the rev trigger before you get the plate in uh, because it is a bit wonky to get in there. Another thing I would recommend is to put a couple dabs of hot glue on the post up here and down here just to keep it nice and secure. Now the foam pad will help keep the plate pushed in but I like the little extra bit of security so that's why I did that. Now um, for the purposes of the demonstration um, I do have a 3S, but there is a problem with using a 3S with the motors that I chose, as you will see right now. It does work with a 2S just as I would expect it to. That's how um, all my rapid strike builds react. The nice little single fire and controllable, uh, you know, hold down fire, all that good stuff. Uh, so that means that the pusher is probably going way too fast, which is something that can happen if your DPS is over 10 or 12-ish with a live center circuit is that this can have a runaway. But like I showed earlier, getting this to change to dead center or region dead center is very easy. The only problem is since I've glued this in, I put myself into a little bit of a pickle with getting the circuit board out. There we go. So all you have to do is take a razor blade and cut. Make sure your battery is disconnected, but cut. All right, that should do it. So let's try this out in a dead center circuit. Here we go. And yes, it can. You could see the pusher arm doing the coasting thing that I mentioned earlier, where it kind of slows down and goes right back into place, but sometimes it will stick out 
if it doesn't get braked in time. So it must have been over uh, 10 ish FPS like I thought. But that is basically the PCB and all the stuff uh, overall. Now, there are some things to mention with it, uh, both good and the bad. So let me change my camera angle really quick. Before we get into the pros, cons, and price of the Rapid Strike Switchblade, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. We have our $10 supporters. We have Tabek, Jorge Verdine, Biggs NZ, Scott Tomlin, Foam Blast, and brand new $10 supporter, Ollie No. Thank you to them. And we also have a $20 donator, Ryan Show. A big thank you to him and to everyone else who donates over the Patreon platform. If you would like to support the channel outside of watching a few YouTube ads, you can check out the Patreon link below. A big thank you to all of them. Let's get into the conclusion of this video. Now it's time to go over the pros and cons of the Switch Play, and spoiler alert, there are not many cons at all. There's actually one. So we're gonna start with the pros and work our way down to cons, with the biggest pro to me being that this is the easiest uh, Switch Plate to set up compared to all the other ones that I've seen and I have used. Uh, first of all, everything is basically plug and play. As long as you can do circuit board soldering, you can do this Switch Plate, and it is not very hard. Um, everything just kind of drops in and the little wire that goes into the board is super easy to get soldered up. Um, really like that there's no rat's nest of wires. I think that's a very nice thing to have um, and you don't have to look at any sort of diagrams to understand where wires go, uh, which is really, really great. Another pro is that the pads are solderable on both sides. Not only the pads for the pusher, flywheels and battery, which have solder areas on both sides, but the areas that the little piece of wire that goes to the uh, switch tabs also has solderable areas on both sides, though I would say to do it on the back. Uh, that's just me, but if you're feeling different, you can do it on either the top, bottom, or both. Another pro is that it is easy to dead center. Now, I know some people will say that uh, doing dead center with a normal setup is also very easy because it's really only cutting one wire away, but being able to scrape away your option is really cool, and you can always put a bridge back over it in case you want to have your live center back, which is awesome. Now, one thing about this is that if you decide to scrape this away and go to live center instead of dead center, um, or if you plan to do a region dead center, you will need a solder sucker in order to get the solder off of the bridged areas, but that's not too bad. Um, they're really inexpensive and they're easy to use, so that's not too much of a con. I would say that's not even like worrisome. Second to last pro is that the switches are screw mounted. You don't have to adhere them down. Very easy to remove and replace. Uh, so I like that a lot. And the last pro that I have is that the roller switch works surprisingly well. I had some doubts about how well the little roller switch would work, but Adrian Kelly has it set up at such a nice angle that it works pretty flawlessly from my uh, short experience. And he says that this iteration of the board, he has had no trouble with this design. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, it makes things simple. You just get a roller switch, drop it into place, and boom, you are done. That is so cool. And you don't need any sort of 3D printed pieces for it, or you don't have to make anything for yourself. Just drop it in play. Like I said, this is basically a drop in and go kit. Makes things very, very easy. Now the neutrals I have for this, because there are some neutrals. Number one is that the rev switch that comes with this kit is pretty meh. Um, it doesn't stick too far out of the shell. Um, I don't really like the design of it. I like, you know, my Bobo style rev triggers. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't stick out of the shell too much, which I'm not a fan of. So if you want to make, you know, it longer, stick out more, you will have to modify it. Maybe Adrian Kelly will uh, make it longer or something, but I just don't like the length of it. But that's just a personal preference of mine, and it's really not too bad overall. Um, another neutral that I have is you will have to cut the same post in the rapid strike that you would with other switch plates. It's not too big of a deal if you're used to doing it, but um, some of the posts have to go. That's the, uh, the price for having a switch plate in your rapid strike, oh well. And of course, the con, the one con, is that the wire method used to connect the switch tabs to the board is a bit harder to undo uh, solder wise than just undoing some wires directly from the tab and having them come off. This will take a little bit more time to get done, but overall it's not too big of a con in my opinion, but it is a bit different and a little harder. And that's really the only thing I could come up with con wise for this. So really doesn't have a lot going against it and there's a lot for this thing. I 
really, really dig it. And the last thing to cover, of course, with the Adrian Kelly Rapid Strike Switch Plate is the price. And the price for this, which comes with everything needed to just put it together and drop into your Rapid Strike, is $17. That's switches, 3D printed parts, the wire, all that stuff, $17. And if we compare that to the BSUK platform, which comes with the 3D printed stuff, some wires, switches, and 3D printed parts at 15 pounds, this is an absolutely awesome deal to the point where I'm giving this a Boba Must Buy award. It is so cool, it is very slick, it's easy to put together. If you've never done a modified rapid strike and you've seen the wiring diagrams, I totally get how they can be a bit overwhelming. If you've done rapid strikes before, this just kind of clears up area and makes it very simple. I mean, you could have XT60s on some wires for all these little parts for really great modularity and you know repair mobility. Um, it's really well designed. Adrian Kelly does a good job with this type of stuff. Um, it's just so cool. It's such a cool piece of tech for the Rapid Strike and I absolutely love the Rapid Strike and it is totally deserving of the award. If you would like to get one for yourself or for someone else, there will be a link in the description down below to the Autodart store where you can get them for the price of $17, which is not bad at all. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it cleared up some of the questions you may have had or you know questions about how it gets put together or whatever. And as always, have a great day wherever you are.